Hi, I'm Cindy Hathaway with Fonz and Porter, and today's So Easy lesson is on fusible lettering. This can be fun for uh, several different projects. As you can see here, we've already cut out the letters, and it says Alana. So I want to walk you through how you would uh, get to this end stage. The first thing that you want to do is go to your computer and pick out a font that you think will work. Um, make sure that it's one that's not too thin of lines because you're going to have to cut these out and applique them on. For this one, um, we've picked a font that's a little bit fancy, but it's still, it's got nice thick lines that we can use. And I printed out the letters that I needed. In Alana's name, there were two A's, but when you do this, you only need to print out one because you can use that over and over again. So um, once you've printed out your letters, you're going to need to reverse them either on your printer or sometimes your computer will allow you to reverse it and enlarge it at the same time. So you need to decide how large you want your letters to be for your project. I was able to enlarge and reverse each of my letters, and I have this one upside down. This is the E. We won't need to go through all of these. Um, there's the A and the N, and as you can see, they have been reversed and they're of a, a manageable size for the project. If the project were only going to fit on something this size, then you wouldn't want to enlarge them at nearly as much. Once you have done that, then you're ready to prepare your fusible by tracing the letters onto it. Um, and when I store my fusible, uh, whatever type that I have purchased, I like to take the uh, part of the wrapper that comes around your roll, fold it up and staple it so that I can put my roll in there and that way I have the directions because each fusible has a slightly different way that they want you to handle it. So I learned this from Liz Porter um, and it's really come in handy. It saved me a lot of frustration and it also keeps your fusible a lot nicer without getting torn and getting the creases. So I've already pre-cut a small piece off of here. I'm going to put the rest back in where I have my instructions and show you how you would go about tracing. Now you don't want to waste your fusible and it doesn't matter where you put each letter because you're going to rough cut these out and be able to uh, line them up later. And I'm going to start with the N. And normally I would just use uh, a ceramic pencil to outline this, but I'm not sure that you can see it. So for today's purposes, I'm going to use a magic marker, which hopefully will be a little darker and allow you to see it. And you just lay the fusible on top of your paper with the sticky side down. This is just the paper here and underneath you can feel there's like little bumps and that's your adhesive. So make sure your adhesive is down on top of your letter. So I'm going to just trace all the way around here and we're just going to do one letter for today. Um, I've already got a bunch of them cut out for you. So now that you've traced your letter, and you would just continue uh, to trace all the letters that you needed by moving your um, adhesive and just tracing over each letter. And again, you would make two A's for this. So once I've done that, then I'm going to want to rough cut. And by rough cut, I mean go around your letter, leave a little space. I don't want to have it have a huge amount um, of fusible on the outside because I don't want to waste my fabric when I uh, go ahead and press this on. So there's a rough cut of the end. And the next thing that you're going to do, once you have all your letters cut out, and I have several of them, let me get this over here. You're going to take your fabric that you choose uh, to have as the colors for your letters. You can pick one color, you could pick several colors, and you're going to take each of these that you've rough cut and lay them with the sticky side down on your fabric 
It doesn't matter, again, which order you put them in. And you're just going to um, place them on the fabric, take it over to your pressing board, and you'll be able to carry them over. Check out your instructions for pressing. And make sure that you don't, um, you don't want to wiggle your iron back and forth because it'll move your letters and it will use up your adhesive and possibly get adhesive on your iron. And again, just follow your uh, manufacturer's instructions for that. You're going to let this cool for a little bit. Just make sure that it sticks. And now you're going to go ahead and cut out each letter on the line that you've drawn. Um, I want to do the end because that's the one I drew. So to start with, um, a lot of times, again, I'm going to just rough cut to make it easier to handle. And then you'll go ahead and cut on that line. And if you use a larger pair of scissors, um, you don't have to stop and start as often. And you get just a little bit smoother line. So we'll just finish cut, cutting this one out so that you can see what it looks like now. Some of your patterns, and you just want to be careful, these you're doing the letters yourself, so you want to make sure that you reverse them. Some patterns when you're doing the applique, if they were to give you letters, they may have already reversed them. So just uh, be aware which way the letters are going. This is such a neat project for uh, a young girl. They just love to have their name on things and um, put it on a quilt or a pillow or a bag. And it doesn't take too long to, to do this. So here I've cut out the letter N. And as you can see, when you turn it over, it's going in the right direction. So the only thing that you have left to do would be to uh, peel this off the back, the paper backing on your uh, adhesive. And if you have trouble with it, you could always uh, take a pin if you have trouble getting it started and just give it a little score and then it'll peel right off. Um, this one I was lucky I was able to get the edge. You peel it off and you can see that the adhesive is on your fabric now and it's ready to be put on uh, the background that you've chosen. So again, we'll bring this, the finished one back in. And by finished, I mean it's just finished uh, having these pressed on. You would then want to take this to your sewing machine and either uh, do a tiny zigzag or uh, maybe a fancy stitch that you have to finish around all of these letters so that they don't fray. You can have so much fun with this. You don't have to do them in a straight line. You can you know, kind of play with them and put them out on your background before you actually press them on. So I wanna thank you for joining me today for this So Easy lesson on fusible lettering. And I hope that you'll check out all the other So Easy lessons that are available on fonsandporter.com.